Armando Hasurungan, Biology and Medicine videos, please make sure to subscribe. Join the forum and group for the latest videos, please visit Facebook Armando Hasurungan. Make sure to like, and here you can also ask questions, answer questions, and post interesting things such as artworks. And you can also change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics. In this video, we are talking about somatic mutation, hypermutation, and class switching in B cells. So to get an appreciation of hypermutation and class switching, let's, be, let's begin from the very beginning in the bone marrow, where a progenitor B cell, through somatic recombination of the, per, of the heavy chain first, will um, make a precursor B cell. And the precursor B cell will undergo a second somatic recombination of the kappa or lambda light chain, which will essentially make, create a unique antibody, usually an IgM uh, class, immunoglobin M class, immature B cell. After an immature B cell has been formed, the immature B cell will then migrate to the lymph nodes, where it will come in through the afferent lymphatics into the lymph node. And cells that go out of the lymph node will obviously leave through the efferent uh, lymphatics. And the black structures coming in the lymph nodes are the veins and arteries. Now let's take a cross section of the lymph node and see where the immature B cell is and how it becomes activated within the lymph node and what it does uh, to, to undergo hypermutation and also class switching. So in the lymph node we have certain designated areas. The cortex, which is usually abundant in B cells, and the paracortex, usually abundant in T cells. Now within the lymph node, we have areas called the germinal center, and the germinal center consists of a dark zone and a light zone. Now the immature B cell, when it, when it goes to the lymph node, it becomes a mature B cell. And at this stage, it can express not only IgM, immunoglobin N, but immunoglobin D antibodies. Now the mature B cell, which is usually abundant in the cortex, will move to the paracortex to get activated by T helper cells, or alternatively, it can get activated by an antigen of a pathogen or even a follicle dendritic cell. Now, when this mature B cell gets activated, regardless, it will move into the germinal center, the dark zone, and begin to proliferate, a process called colonial expansion. Now, it is thought that the mature B cells, when it proliferates into cells called centroblasts, an intracellular enzyme called AID will introduce mutations, point mutations, on the variable region of the DNA. So the variable region that encodes for the variable region of the antibody. And so this introduction of mutations, also known as process called hypermutation, will change the antibody, increasing its affinity or decreasing its affinity, increasing its specificity or decreasing its specificity. And so these mature B cells, through proliferation and hypermutation, will create many types of central blasts with an increased affinity or a decreased affinity for the particular antigen that stimulated the activation of the mature B cell in the first place. Now, in the light zone of the germinal center, we have other types of cells, such as follicular dendritic cells, FDC, and T helper cells, with the antigen presented to the mature B cell in the first place. Now, what happens is, the centroblasts will move from the dark zone into the light zone, where they will become centrocytes. So now, what happens is, for example, if this particular centroblast had a disadvantage mutation, if through hypermutation, it had a disadvantage mutation, it will move into the light zone and become a centrocyte, and it cannot make contact with a T helper cell, and it does not the antibody of this particular centrocyte does not recognize the antigen presented by the T helper cell, and so will get destroyed through self-destruction, through apoptosis. Similarly, this centroblast also has a, had a disadvantage mutation, and so is not needed by the body because the antibody does not recognize the antigen. Its affinity decreased, and so it goes through apoptosis. However, this particular centroblast had an improved affinity through hypermutation. And so, as it moves to the light zone and becomes a centrocyte, it recognizes the antigens and, uh, from the T helper cell or the follicular dendritic cell. And so, the body would want to produce more of this particular centrocyte because it had improved affinity. And so, this particular centrocyte will undergo a process called class switching and differentiation, where it will 
become either a plasma cell or a memory, um, memory B cell with a different type of antibody class, such as it can be an IgE or IgG antibody. So that is class switching. Now let's look at the process of hypermutation and class switching in a bit more detail, in a bigger picture. Here is a section of the lymph node, the lymph node medulla, and the orange circular area is the germinal center, consisting of a dark zone and a light zone. The mature B cell is in the lymph node and expresses immunoglobin D and immunoglobin N M antibodies. A mature B cell can take a different pathway in that it can become a short-lived plasma cell, typically which secretes immunoglobin M. And this is usually a quick response, the primary immune response. However, a mature B cell can become activated when they interact with a T helper cell, antigen presenting cell, or an antigen of a pathogen. And these will activate the mature B cell, which will cause it to proliferate into centroblasts within the dark zone. And also, while proliferating, the mature B cell will undergo somatic hypermutation. And this is done by the enzyme activation induced deaminase, or AID, which essentially causes point mutations within the gene of a mature B cell. And so this mature B cell will undergo proliferation into many central blasts as shown by this diagram. So we have many central blasts. And from the somatic hypermutation, some of these central blasts will have improved affinity, or some of these central blasts will have a decreased affinity, and so will be a bad central blast for the immune, immune response. So central blasts are currently residing in the dark zone but then they will move into the light zone of the germinal center and become centrocytes, where they will try to make contact with follicular dendritic cells or T helper cells with antigens on them. So here in the light zone, we can see that there is follicular dendritic cells and we have T helper cells, all of which expresses an antigen for the centroblast or centrocyte to recognize. Now let's take a particular centroblast. And this particular centroblast had a change in its variable region through hypermutation. But its affinity has decreased. It had a disadvantaged mutation and so goes through apoptosis, cell destruction, because it is not required. It does not recognize the antigen on the T cell or follicular dendritic cell. Let's look at some other centroblasts. Now a rule is that centroblasts through hypermutation who obtained a higher affinity antibody will survive. And so, for example, this particular central blast's antibody does not recognize the antigen on the T helper cell. There's no match. And so this central blast, now a centrocyte, once it's come into the light zone, will be destroyed through apoptosis. However, this central blast, for example, had an improved affinity through hypermutation. And so the antibody of this centrocyte can recognize the antigen presented by the follicular dendritic cell. And because the centrocyte's antibody recognizes the antigen, the body would want this centrocyte to survive. And so the centrocyte will undergo class switching, where its antibody will change classes to a different type, such as from immunoglobin M to immunoglobin A. Similarly, with this centrocyte, which recognizes the antigen, it will undergo class switching, where the antibody will, antibody will switch classes to from immunoglobin D or immunoglobin M to immunoglobin E or immunoglobin G. So essentially, centrocytes with improved affinity will successfully make contact with an antigen and then it will class switch where it will switch uh, its immunoglobin class to a different type, to IgE, IgG, or IgA. Now after class switching, the centrocytes will differentiate into plasma cells or memory B cells. So this centrocyte after class switching will differentiate into either long-lived plasma cells or memory B cells where it will also undergo proliferation. And this centrocyte, for example, will differentiate into memory B cells. Now just to recap, the long-lived plasma cells secrete antibodies. And what do antibodies do? Well, three main things. They can neutralize a pathogen, they en enhance phagocytosis of a pathogen, and they also activate the complement cascade. Memory B cells will just form memories of that antigen which invaded the body. So that concludes the video on the somatic hypermutation and class switching overview. Uh, please make sure to click on the links to learn further about somatic hypermutation and class switching in a lot more detail.